Hi, and welcome back to part two of my video series covering the new Q900 version 4. If you haven't seen my introduction video for the Q900 version 4, then it's only a couple of videos back, and I recommend going to watch it after this video. So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at some Android applications that can be used with the Q900. As the Q900 has an extremely small form factor and with its built-in battery and automatic tuner, it does make a really excellent portable radio. Using an Android tablet or mobile phone, you can use a couple of cool applications that we'll take a look at in this video. Now, one comment I always get on my Q900 videos is regarding the lack of a standard spinning VFO. Now, there are solutions for that, including hardware solutions, but I'll leave the hardware solutions for another video and concentrate on showing you the software solution. The free Q Radio BLE application that is available for Android lets you fully control the Q900 either from a tablet or mobile device. Incidentally, Q Radio BLE used to be available on iOS, but it appears to have disappeared from the Apple App Store, well, at least under Q Radio BLE name. The application looks rather basic, but in a way that's good because it means all of the important features are quickly accessible just by tapping the appropriate button on the screen. There's a little VFO wheel that spins round and allows you to change frequency, just like a hardware VFO, but it's on a screen. You may notice the slowly updated band scope just below the frequency readout. Now it appears to me that this is coming from a data stream rather than an IQ stream from the radio, meaning it's not exactly going to be in real time, but it does give you some indication of what's going on around the center frequency. One would also assume that you would not be far from the radio, so you could just see the radio screen anyhow. The tablet used in this example is a Teclass T50 with an octa-core CPU and a 10.9 inch 2K LCD. Now it makes light work of this application and so far I'm quite liking it. Trying the same application on my Doogee V20 Pro Android phone offers the same experience, but of course on a smaller screen. For remote control, maybe the mobile phone option seems better as the buttons are laid out closer together but it's nice to see support for both tablets and mobile phone screens from the same Q Radio BLE application. Now next up is an application called FT8CN, which is an Android application which supports a multitude of ham radio transceivers, including the Q900. Now I've spent some time with this application and I must admit, I did get a little frustrated at some things not working and random crashes. However, this was not off fault of the radio. It was in fact due to me using an older version of the FT8CN software. So if you're going to try this software, make sure to download the latest APK from the GitHub site, which I'll link below. Since upgrading to the latest version, I've not had one single crash and it's worked flawlessly. Now you can either use Bluetooth or a USB cable between your Android device and the Q900. For this demonstration, I've used the USB-C to USB-C cable to connect between the rear of the radio and the Teclass T50. Again, the Teclass T50 ran FT8CN with ease, and it was quite nice just to sit back and watch this matrix of call signs flowing down the screen. The FT8CN, once configured with your radio, can pretty much operate automatically. It will automatically start a QSO with the next station calling CQ. Band control and output power levels can be adjusted anywhere within the app using the control buttons on the right side of the screen. There's also an inbuilt QSO log, which keeps a log of previously made QSOs, meaning you won't work the same station twice by mistake. Now, I've never really been a huge FT8 fan, but sat here with the Q900 connected up to the Teclass T50 running FT8CN, it's actually quite addictive watching the contacts being made. You just don't know when or where the next contact will take place. One setting within FT8CN which is important is to adjust the no response setting. I set mine to around two or three calls so that after this period it will move on to another station if it doesn't get a response from the station. There's also a nice little world map where you can view live in real time the QSOs in which FT8CN is seeing and decoding. I guess this would be useful to see how the propagation is performing from your antenna's point of view. Now the last application, which unfortunately I cannot demonstrate at the time of recording this video, 
is an application called Star Tracker. Now, this is an Android application which will track satellites as they pass overhead and then control the tuning of the Q900 automatically. When I talk about tuning, we're talking about Doppler shift as the receive frequency changes as a satellite passes over. Now I do plan on creating a dedicated video just on this application because it's all down to timing. Timing when a workable satellite is going to pass overhead and be contactable using my vertical antenna for two meters and 70 centimeters. Ideally, you would either use a set of Yagi antennas with a rotator to track the satellite's position, but I just don't have that set up here yet. Of course, another way to use this would be to use a hand trackable antenna, like a dual band Yagi from Arrow Antennas. Now this would make a great portable setup if you're okay with tracking a satellite by hand. Now maybe I should make my own dual band handheld Yagi for this. Now that would be quite a fun project to document. The Star Tracker application only supports portrait, so that's why it's showing how it does on the screen. However, it's a free application and does work with other radios than the Q900, so download it and give it a go. In fact, if any of you have used this software before, then let me know down in the comments as I'll be interested to know your experience with it. Now, the next video on the Q900, which will be part three, I'll be covering the output power for each band along with signal quality measurements. Now, I know you are all waiting to see that video. Well, so am I. I hope to have that finished very soon. As you can appreciate, it's actually quite a lengthy video. Anyway, guys, if you've used any of these applications or maybe you can suggest another application that will work with the Q900, then let me know down in the comments below. Incidentally, the Q900 uses the FT817 protocol, so it could work with a multitude of applications. Now, this video has really only just been about Android applications, and obviously you can use Windows software such as WSJTX, but the whole idea of this video was to show you what applications you could take portable just using your mobile phone or a tablet, which of course is easy to carry when you're out traveling. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.